um, within our own tradition, in the year 1717, a legal document was issued with a, with a stamp from the Mohammedan government of the time, but it ratified the conclusion of a Gorya Vaishnava assembly, which had come together for several months in the manner of a legalistic debate. There were two parties, Swakiyavadis, who state that Radha and Krishna are ultimately married, and all this idea of the Parakiyavad, of Krishna's um, associating with Radha and the gopis outside of marriage, that's not correct. So it was Swakiyavadis versus Parakiyavadis, and they, they came together, the, the pundits on both sides. Um, I'm quoting from a book written in 1925 called The Chaitanya Movement by Melville Kennedy, who was a Christian who was not disposed, or, or rather he was antipathetic to um, Gorya Vaishnavism, but his statement here uh, we can take. Both sides, both doctrines were represented by their ablest champions from all over, all parts of Bengal and Orissa and Benares as well. They called people from all over the Vaishnava world at the time. The Vaishnava scriptures were taken as the basis of discussion, including the Bhagavad Purana, Chaitanya's teachings, Sridhar Swami's famous commentary on the Bhagavad, Sanatan's commentary on the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad, and other less known works. Interestingly, it wasn't what the public think about us and our morality. That was not taken as the basis. The scripture was taken as the basis. Great crowds attended. It was public. It wasn't hush-hush behind closed doors. And the discussion continued over a period of months. They didn't rush it. The Parakiyavadis finally gained the victory and in consequence the Svakiyavadi Goswamis lost standing and surrendered their disciples throughout the country. The absolute truth cannot be two. Either by instituting female Diksha Gurus, we'll please Srila Prabhupada, or we won't. How do we know? Srila Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. <laughs>